Bruno asked me to, to, to prepare a lecture about Brazilian economy. And this is a difficult task. I'm, I'm the responsible for the discipline of Brazilian contemporary economy at undergrad and grad, graduate courses here. But it's very difficult to, to, to try to, to pass um, a message in one hour. One hour or something like that. I decided to, to, to make a, a presentation concentrated in last uh, period, more actual, more uh, updated. But certainly, this is a very personal view. I did put here, uh, it's a, it's a photo, uh, so many references. But uh, later, if you if you have some curiosity, we can we can talk uh, a little bit more about the references. It's a very long presentation with a lot of uh, graphs and numbers. But uh, I will try to, to concentrate on the, the main message without uh, too much details because of the time and because of the, the public that, as Bruno said, is not uh, only economic, economic, economic students. So uh, I call this a uh, panoramic view of the recent track. And uh, let's start with a uh, very, very not a reality. Brazilian current economic situation is quite disappointing to use a neutral word. What is disappointing? Well, uh, low growth after uh, a deep, maybe the most, uh, most severe recession in Brazilian history, persistent unemployment, social regression, public finances in a terrible situation. Uh, we have uh, now good numbers, economic numbers, only in inflation. That is uh, a historic problem of Brazilian economics, but economy, but now it's not in not a good position. And uh, another very important uh, source of problems of Brazilian economy, that's external accounts that are in a good position today. But both inflation and balance of payments are in, in good position not uh, because of the best reasons, it's because of the recession and the slow growth. Well, but uh, as we already say something, uh, in other aspects of life in society in Brazil, things are even worse than in the economy. Uh, the country is experiencing maybe its worst phase in recent history. Uh, and it's not uh, an exaggeration to say that we are in the middle of a nightmare. But this is, and this is my important point, in a sharp contrast with the reality of a few years ago. We had some uh, five or ten years ago in one of the most optimistic phases of our economic, at least, history. Why? How could things could deteriorate in that way. What went so wrong in Brazilian economy? I'm, I don't have the ambition to, to, to offer you a, a complete explanation. I will try to make a short, uh, short of my opinion. And I know that is very partial and is only economics. Uh, one of the conclusions of this, this lecture is that there are no uh, single explanation for our crisis and the explanation is not just uh, an economy uh, issue but uh, we will try so starting with oh, oh, some oh, some English it's not so original to say to, to show the economy's covers it's so common in Brazil but here we have three uh, covers uh, of this important British uh, magazine uh, about Brazil. In 2009, Brazil takes off, and four years, just four years later, in 2013, uh, had Brazil blown it, and uh, three years later, Brazil fall. Our <coughs> former president, Dilma Rousseff. And 
uh, last year, the Economist uh, published this cover during the election in Brazil with our president, uh, calling him uh, Latin America's menace. And last week, this cover about the, the threats to uh, Amazon forests, etc. So, just to, to have and during the, the presentation, I will say I uh, will show some images, especially for the, the, the foreign students that know, don't uh, know people here in Brazil. Later, I can send the, the presentation for you just to. And if you want, to, I, I try to explain who are the people shown on the photos. Well, to try to understand this track from the optimistic to the tragedy, uh, I will say, I will try to, to follow this outline. A broad historical perspective, a uh, focus on Lula's government and the optimistic period of Brazilian economy, uh, the, the government, the Dilma Rousseff uh, government, deceleration, crisis and fall, and very preliminary ideas about uh, Temer, that was the, the, the vice president of Dilma, who took the government. What is happening here? Do you hear me? Without microphone? No, because of the... I don't, I don't know. Okay. And uh, Bolsonaro in economic terms. Okay. So, uh, to, because of the time, let's, let's go to the... Uh, start the historical overview. I don't have time. It's very, very interesting. <laughs> Brazilian economic history, but ju just to, 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 to take a broad idea, Brazil, in economic terms, was a country invented by the ancient <coughs> colonial system. <coughs> we are colonized by Portugal, firstly. This is a map of Brazilian division of the, the territory. Uh, and our economy was, for a long, long time, essentially oriented toward primary commodity exports. Firstly, uh, uh, a vegetable called Pau Brasil, from this, this uh, tree, we derive our name, Brazil, that was used to, to make inks. And later, much more important, gold, there was a gold cycle in Brazil, sugar cane, uh, rubber, and since the middle of the 18th century, coffee. And for a long, long time, was the main uh, economic activity of Brazil. Uh, one very, very important uh, factor of Brazilian history is slavery. Uh, firstly, uh, our original uh, people, and later, the African uh, slaves. This was a very important economic activity in Brazil also. And uh, slavery in Brazil was abolished only in 1888. And uh, science, heritage of this, this long time uh, uh, slavery period in Brazil are very present in our society to, uh, today. And because of this, because of other uh, aspects also, uh, Brazil is one of the most unequal uh, societies in the world, certainly. Uh, the numbers of uh, inequality are, are difficult to measure across the world, but certainly Brazil is, if I would choose one characteristic of Brazilian economy and society, I would, I would choose this the inequality in terms of uh, income, wealth, uh, land, property, and opportunities. Uh, Brazil was uh, historically, I, I, I'm using a line of the time, until 1930, Brazil was part of this uh, international division of labor. We are basic, basically uh, a primary commodity exports. Later, uh, in nine, from 1930 to 1980, a long time, half century, we experienced a, a very important uh, period called uh, the National Developmentalist Period in Brazil. That's changed the reality of Brazilian economy, society, cities. Uh, Brazil was a third a Euro urban society and an industrialized country 
very diversificated economy, and there are different uh, parts of this, this, this track, this, this transition from a coffee exporter society to a, a, a industrial country with a industrial structure <coughs> close, similar to, to the to the most uh, industrialized countries in the world in the 80s, the beginning of the 80s. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very long story, I don't have time to to, to, to pass this. And some, some pictures here about this, this different uh, uh, part of Brazilian history, the start of industrialization, and uh, the construction of our capital, Brasilia, in, during the 50s. That uh, some, some important people here Figures, but uh, I don't have time to 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 enter the detail. This uh, this very uh, long, different uh, period in Brazil came to an end during the eighties, and together with uh, our uh, our neighbors, uh, we suffered a, a very very difficult period called the Latin American debt crisis. And Brazilian history used to, to, to call this period the last decade. It was uh, a, a period of uh, macroeconomic instability, uh, low and unstable economic growth, very high inflation and failed stabilization programs, worsening of social conditions, I, I didn't say, but during the, the period of state intervention, uh, central planning, nationalism, uh, one very important characteristic of Brazilian development was that was socially unfair. The income concentration of Brazil increased a lot during this period of state intervention. So it was developmentalism with uh, social uh, regression, social concentration. During the 80s, uh, the situation of social uh, social indicators uh, was worse uh, a little bit, but this is a period of re-democratization. Uh, Brazil uh, lived under a military dictatorship from 64 to 85, and the, the second half of uh, 80s was a, a period of re-democratization, and we had a new constitution in 1980 that was progressive in some economic terms, nationalist, nationalist in, in economic issues, and in social rights, it was very progressive. So, here are another image of uh, this period in Brazil. And then, during the 1990s, we, uh, a little bit late, compared to our uh, neighbors, we experienced a liberalizing period. Washington consensus reforms, trade liberalization, and financial deregulation, uh, privatization of state-owned enterprises that were a very important part of the uh, previous model. And then in 1994, we finally uh, got to, to, to control very high inflation. It was the real plan, or in Portuguese, plan real, real is our uh, currency, as you already know. <laughs> uh, and then it was uh, a very very important program uh, with some innovation in terms of stabilization, but completely related with the new times in terms of international capital flows. And it's similar to Argentina and Mexican experience more or less at the same time. It was based on a nominal uh, exchange rate anchor to control the prices, but in 1999, we suffered a very important one more, this is very common in Brazilian history, exchange rate crisis, or currency crisis that evaluated a lot of our country, our currency. And as a result, the, the, the period of uh, liberal, liberalizing reforms in Brazil was marked also, despite the, the control of inflation, was marked by low growth, high unemployment, and uh, uh, continuous pressure on the balance of payments as is better, as is standard in Brazilian history. This uh, bad uh, results, especially in terms of employment, 
uh, decreases the popularity of the the the, the model. The Brazilian Brazilian uh, liberalizing period was much uh, shorter than they expected. Here some some very important people uh, of that period. Those here are the economists that, and politicians that were involved in the Plano Real. But here a, a, a newspaper uh, calling attention to unemployment during this period. So all of these are part of a uh, 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 climate of uh, low popular support to liberal model in Brazil, despite the, the low inflation that was and still is a very important uh, factor of popularity in Brazil. In that context, we arrived to Lula's period. Lula was elected uh, after three previous attempts. Lula was elected in 2002 with a more moderate uh, rhetoric in terms of economic and social reforms. And the result of this period was after two decades of slow growth and high macroeconomic stability, Brazilian economy experienced a very good moment in the first decades of uh, the 21st century. What was good? <coughs> Growth resumption, we suffered, we experienced, uh, I will show the numbers, uh, recovery of economic growth, uh, reduction, very important in external vulnerability, low inflation, fiscal uh, accounts on a good position, and a great novelty, and a very positive one, that was the combination of economic growth with social inclusion. There's a lot of uh, important uh, researches about the, the, the limits of this income distribution that I will talk a little bit about. Uh, but it's uh, uh, undeniable that uh, in terms of personal income, there was a distribution of, uh, there was a, a process of social inclusion in Brazil <laughs> during that, that period. Move on. This phase uh, can be, in my opinion, in our, in our understanding, understood by a combination of domestic and external impulses and a specific mix of economic policy. And in the sequence I will show some numbers and discuss some of the determinants for this good phase. Here are some images, uh, important images for this period in terms of politics and in terms of uh, uh, economics. Here, oil industry, it's an important uh, moment in Petrobras, the discoveries of oil, very, very below the earth. <coughs> Here in Lula with Ivan uh, Rousseff, that was a very important ministry, uh, launching the, the program of uh, growth acceleration, and then uh, uh, a ceremony with the famous Bolsa Familia program that was social transfer support. Families. Well, some numbers about this period. First of all, growth resumption. This is a, 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 a registry, a record of uh, low and unstable growth in Brazil. If I show the 80s, was more or less the same thing, but here something appeared to change. A recovery. And with the exception of this 2009, because of the international financial crisis, we appeared to have uh, we, we back to, to, to growth that was a Brazilian characteristic until the 80s. Here uh, and later, a uh, deceleration and then uh, a tragedy. But here there was a, a brief moment of optimism. optimism. And here some numbers of uh, balance of payments. Uh, Current account surplus and then a recovery of uh, external financing. Uh, here, reduction of international uh, external vulnerability, net external debt uh, as a share of GDP uh, decreasing a lot because of the, uh, the payment of external debt and because of the accumulation of uh, foreign reserves. Here, the inflation, inflation in Brazil. 
since 1995, stability during the real uh, plan. Consequences of the second term of uh, less, the previous government, the inflation was 12.5, and then a reduction in inflation to, to uh, moderate uh, records in Brazil during the uh, Lula's government. And here, uh, the public debt, especially in net terms, the decreasing of net uh, debt, it was a, a very express, a very important uh, activity of Lula government. In, in, in gross terms, not so much, but instability, contrary to the previous period where there was a fiscal crisis uh, explicit here. Well, what was, what were the drivers of this success? How to understand the good results? First of all, as uh, always in countries like Brazil, we have to, 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 to pay attention to international environment. And that, between 2003 and 2008, we uh, experienced a very, very good uh, international uh, situation, uh, a period called Bonanza, that was the Spanish going to a good phase. To Brazilian, to Brazilian uh, economy, two sources of impulses. Trade, because of the primary commodity prices that are very important to our exports. Uh, trade and financial, in terms of capital flows, impulses. Those uh, impulses, good, uh, positive impulses, were important for, for growth resumption only in the beginning of the resumption, 2004, but uh, unlike other countries like Korea, or like even China or smaller countries, Brazil was never, since 1930, uh, driven by exports. The economic growth always is driven by domestic demand because of the size, the, the, the industrial structure of Brazil. This important inputs from outside were important to resume growth, but later they are important just for the improvement of this external accounts. Uh, uh, what I try to say that Brazil is not an export-led growth. Never. And difficult, uh, it's difficult to, to, to try to make it a, a net exporter uh, and carry the, the whole economy. The second uh, important driver were income distribution and credit, domestic credit expansion. What, what was the main driver of growth was domestic market in Brazil. Uh, and then the, the size of the consumption market in Brazil increased a lot in a very short time because of the income distribution and the expansion of uh, bank credit. This was motivated by social transfers minimum wage policy that for Brazilian labor market is a very important policy and public banks and macro stability fostering uh, domestic credit. I will show the numbers, uh, very impressive numbers for you. And then a, a third uh, impulse, a third determinant of this good base. Since 2007, the second term of Lula, uh, an, uh, an improvement, an uh, increase in public investment especially through that uh, program of uh, economic acceleration, infrastructure, uh, projects, etc., etc. Some numbers. Uh, this is a long-time uh, record of uh, commodity markets. We are talking about this <coughs> increase in commodity prices that changed completely the situation of terms of trade of Brazilian exports and imports, very important inputs that produced this huge trade surplus in Brazil during the period. Later it decreased. But we are trying to we are, trying to, we are talking about the good phase. And in terms of uh, international capital flows, this phase, this very, very positive phase of what we used to call here the international liquidity cycle. And here uh, a record of the credit stocks 
the total uh, stock of credit to private sector in Brazilian economy, very, very low uh, patterns here, increased a lot. Uh, unemployment rates in Brazil since 2003 decreased to uh, low, uh, minimum uh, circle lows, minimum uh, wage uh, increased in real terms also. This is the, the Bolsa Familia program in terms of uh, the, the green is number of families covered and here uh, the amount of money. That is very, very few, uh, low money. It's a very cheap program but very efficient, covering uh, 20, 27 million families in Brazil. 200, people, 200 million people in Brazil. Here uh, a picture of the total social spending in Brazil increasing a lot and the results in terms of poverty. This is the, the biggest achievement of Brazilian society in that century. The reduction, radical reduction of uh, poverty and extreme poverty. And here the G index. This number here of 2013 it's uh, probably is wrong. But uh, I have more updated number there. But this trend of a uh, very unequal society that decreases a little bit, but in a very fast uh, <coughs> rhythm, this, this uh, inequality is also very, very important. Here, a picture of uh, investment, capital formation as a share of GDP, very low compared to China, for example. No, almost nothing, but increased from 15 to almost 20. And later we are here uh, again, but it was a, an increase in investment of Brazilian economy and driven in part by public investment that uh, also grew and private consumption. Here are the rates of growth of private consumption and here the rates of growth of investment decision. Well, what about the economic policy in that period? Here we have a dichotomy or a contrast between, between what is a structural options, like a model, development model options, contrasting with microeconomic policies like uh, exchange, a fiscal and monetary exchange rate, fiscal and monetary policy. On the structural side, we experienced a slow, gradual and incomplete return to something like the old developmentalism. But uh, with the novelty of income distribution. In, in contrast with 70s developmentalism, this, this period in Brazil was so, uh, state intervention, public banks and enterprises, industrial policies, but with the adding of social costs. This is very different from 70s. But in terms of macro uh, management, we have a very orthodox, very conventional uh, experience. Exchange rate appreciation that in Brazil is very, very important to control inflation, tight fiscal policy, and very high interest rates. Uh, this this uh, description was moderated in 2007 uh, with more space to public spending and uh, as an anti-cyclical reaction to international financial crisis. Here are some numbers about the, the macroeconomic policy. This is the nominal exchange rate appreciation. We are talking about this trend here to the international financial crisis. <laughs> One uh, dollar was costing four reais uh, in the end of 2002 and reached 1.5 reais in 2008. Impressive. Uh, strong appreciation. This is what's important for inflation control to, to income distribution, but it's very complicated to the to show this structure. This is the, the calculation of a real and effective exchange rate during the same period. And here are our policy rate, interest rate, selected 
that was not so big like uh, 97, 95, that was 40 percent a year. But here, doing Blue Spirit was always above 15 percent. That is unbelievably high. And here, fiscal accounts uh, after a, a unbalanced year, a, a situation with a very high but, uh, <coughs> primary surplus, 3.5 or some, sometimes almost 4% of the GDP as an economy to pay interest rates, interest uh, payments that were in uh, rent. Brazil used to spend 6, 7, 8% of GDP as uh, interest on its public debt. It's true, very, very high uh, cost. Well, so this was a very fast picture of uh, the good phase. And that we already know that came to an end. It was not just uh, an explosion, it was not a sub sudden reversal of this, uh, this situation, but uh, it was not uh, for always, not uh, eternal. What was wrong? Was that uh, the trends of a Brazilian economy were unsustainable? In Brazilian debate, that was marked by a, a strong predominance of orthodox liberal uh, views in terms of academic uh, public debate. Uh, this uh, it's very common uh, to call that model a uh, consumption-led growth. A uh, 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 period based only on consumption was unsustainable. This was impossible to maintain because if you base your growth just in consumption and not in investment, it will appear some problems in terms of sustainability or fiscal problems, external problems, etc. I, I, I need to say that I don't like this view, these critics. I have critics to, to this uh, experience also, but I don't like this view. Uh, in terms of uh, reality, empirical facts, and in terms of theoretical uh, basis. First of all, the investment, inducive investment, was very important also. It was not just consumption. It was in inducive investment that grew more than consumption. And then, in theoretical terms, I don't have time to discuss this with you, but consumption and investment are not competitors. Uh, I don't, uh, we don't have to decrease consumption to control consumption to increase investment. No. In our Keynesian style of macroeconomics, one is together with the other. Well, but this is not to say that everything was perfect, no. And in fact, uh, the, the the most, the, the, the engine of credit plus income distribution had uh, decreasing effects on growth. So if you double the value of uh, minimum wage, the real value of minimum wage, probably you won't be able to double again uh, so fast. If you put the, the, the size of stock, uh, credit stock from 25 to 50% of GDP, one time, you won't double again. So, uh, some, uh, I like, I, I prefer the, the, the statement that additional impulse were it, not uh, uh, alternative. It was Brazilian economy in uh, 2010 was in need of uh, other, another uh, engine of growth to complement, not to substitute, not to replace consumption and redu uh, reduce the investment. And Infrastructure investments in terms of uh, logistics, uh, roads, airports, etc., but also in social terms, uh, social infrastructure, uh, transports, uh, public uh, education, public health. All of this was uh, an explored way to improve uh, social conditions and to foster growth. Those were the obvious uh, candidates. And they, uh, the 
the, the foreign government, the US government, tried to explore these, these alternatives. And Brazilian had a very, very important problem. It was in its productive structure. As uh, an important Brazilian economy, uh, Ricardo Bielchowski used to say, we had mass consumption but in Brazil, but mass production in China. There, there, it's impossible to increase the consumption here with imports, uh, products, and components, etc. This was the biggest structural problem of Brazilian economy since last decade. And there is a, a very big debate if the, this was a deindustrialization or not. And the terminology is not the most important thing here. The fact that our productive structure that was suffering since the 90s was showing clear signs of regression uh, since the last decade. And not only because of the exchange rate appreciation. This was a very important reason, but the international reorganization of the industry, uh, another very important uh, weaknesses of Brazilian economy. Some numbers about this last uh, feature. This is the composition of Brazilian exports in three categories of uh, technology. Basics, semi-manufactured, and manufacturers. Uh, basic, basics share of Brazilian exports has uh, almost doubled from 1994 to, to in 20 years. We, we were back to a primary export economy. And here is the industry trade balance, the trade balance just of industrial sector. We pass from a, a surplus to a very important deficit, and this is the most unbelievable number. This is the manufacturing industry share of Brazilian GDP that reached in the 80s 25, 27, almost 30 percent of the economy and increased a lot during the 80s and the 90s but had reached, uh, uh, in the start of Lula's government, almost 20. And the, the, the trend was uh, back to previous industrialization period. We, we know that uh, we could uh, make a, a lecture just about uh, the, the deindustrialization and polymy, etc. But here, this is a very important the problem of Brazilian economy that was present at the end of Lula's period. In summary, uh, here I will quote a uh, work of mine, I would like to, 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 to do this, but this is useful. Uh, I have a, a colleague in Rio de Janeiro that uh, it was his PhD thesis that I was the advisor. So uh, he tried, Rodrigo Greg Gani, tried to, to to integrate three dimensions of development, macro, uh, macroeconomic, growth, uh, stimulus to, to demand, productive, structural, and social, and characterize a uh, period with synthetic indicators. And this is a paper uh, that is still in progress. When it's ready, I can send you. <laughs> that uh, the, the title is From Inclusive Growth to Visual Cycles, the Recent Brazilian Trajectory According to an integrated approach to development. I, I, I brought this here just to, 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 to show you the name. We characterized this Lula's period from 2004. This is because of the data availability. It's not 2003 because data availability. To 2010, inclusive growth. We had growth. We had social inclusion, but no progressive structural change. Uh, and here there is a typology progressive, structural change, regressive. Expansionist, macro, contractionist. And here social inclusion and social exclusion. Lula's was, Lula's period was here in social inclusion and expansionist macro, but no progressive stability in terms of uh, social uh, productive structure. So then, in that environment, in that situation, started the human spirit. Some images of this very turbulent uh, period of Brazilian society, politics, and economy. Uh, some pressure from the newspaper about inflation, a mass demonstration against the government, 
there, June 2013, mass demonstration against everything, nobody knows everything, but uh, social unrest. Here, the, the Ministry of uh, Economy, Guido Mantega, and here, the uh, two uh, new Ministries of Economy 2015, so, Mr. Levy and Mr. Nelson Barbosa. Well, uh, what was the strategy of Dilma on the first period, on the first government? He, she changed some things, but not everything in terms of uh, economic strategy. Uh, in the structural dimension, the effort, uh, the, the, the bet was keeping or reinforcing two of the main features of the Lula's developmentalism, the role of state and social policies. That side, the ones doubled the, the bet. But she tried to change what was a strange uh, combination, uh, trying to change the macroeconomic mix, but not in a unique direction. Firstly, very, very, the first month of uh, his term in 2011, she made a fiscal adjustment, cutting public investment, that was growing importantly, and a monetary contraction. This reduced suddenly the Brazilian growth in 2011, but later, uh, in a very short uh, period, uh, the sign was completely changed. Uh, interest rates were reduced uh, aggressively. Uh, she, she adopted uh, capital controls to try to control exchange rate depreciation and uh, made a lot of incentives for the private sector. Energy costs, reduction, tax exemptions, and uh, uh, public banks directed credit to industry, a lot of incentives to recover the industrial capacity, uh, production and investment. We can uh, define this strategy as an industrialist strategy, trying to, 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 to focus the biggest problem of Brazilian economy that was in terms of industrial structure. The goal was to reduce the cost of production and investment, eroding the fiscal space available. The fiscal accounts were getting worse because of these efforts to re-boost the industrial sector. But this didn't work. It was a failure, a complete failure. The evolution of micro policies, especially after the political and economic consequences of the mass demonstrations of June uh, 13, was erratic and have worsened the situation. Uh, in Brazilian debate, currently debate, it's common to say that Dilma's economic, macroeconomic policy was this. No, Dilma's macroeconomic policy was a lot of things. Each period to another side. So it was erratic. Uh, the increase in inflation that was uh, painted in that uh, conservative magazine cover, uh, complaining about the tomato price that increased a lot because of climate reasons, it was uh, combated, it was faced by uh, a reversion in expansionary monetary policy with a new round of uh, interest rates increases. Uh, some turbulence in international financial markets led to the dismantling of financial regulations and a devaluation uh, trend reinforced by domestic and external pressures. But uh, until the election in 2014, this depreciation trend was moderated by a swap based intervention program. And then an extension of incentives to private sector. Uh, our very big uh, development, National Development Bank uh, increased a lot its uh, loans to, to industry, to infrastructure, uh, a lot of uh, additional tax exemptions. Uh, they tried, uh, they, in fact, they 
controlled administrative price like fuel, energy, a lot of uh, very bad, bad uh, tools of economic policy, but just to manage the short term, just to reach the end of the first term. As a result, not only stagnation of industry and investment, but also more inflation, more fiscal problem, and an external deterioration. Here, using the data of uh, that, that paper that I, I quote, uh, some uh, synthetic indicators about growth. You can say the, the average growth of 2004, 2010, 4.5 decreased to 1.1. And Z, that is a, a, a proxy for all uh, domestic spending uh, determinants, the, domain, uh, the autonomous spending decreased from almost 6 to 0 0.3. So the passage from an expansionist macro to a contractionist or a neutral one. Here, uh, indicators of social uh, inclusion or exclusion, uh, real social income, effective uh, household credit, effective real income, uh, average real wage, also decreasing a lot. And here, very complicated indicators of uh, efficiency showing that we depart from a, a neutral or a stagnant uh, productive structure to clear a contraction in a regression in terms of uh, productive structure. Well, this this more difficult situation, uh, short term difficult in economics, uh, led to a radical shift in the beginning of the second term of Dilma's president in 2015. The 2014 presidential race in Brazil was uh, very turbulent, was marked by instability, unexpected movements, and the strong polarization of Brazilian society. And uh, during that uh, race, that campaign, economics or the Brazilian economy, was an important topic. And the way the, the electoral debate put things was like opposing the inclusive model, it was Lula's and even Dilma's one heritage, to an unpopular adjustment that was mainly uh, advocated by right-wing candidates. After the victory, Dilma, uh, the, corruption, the corruption scandals of uh, Brazilian biggest oil enterprises and all the government, and uh, general political instability and radicalization of the uh, Brazilian uh, situation added uncertainty. But the fact is that Dilma won the second round of uh, presidential race uh, with a very clear speech, a very clear rhetoric of economic inclusion, economic growth with social inclusion. Uh, it was a face of the model, clear. And then, uh, some weeks after the victory, she decided to make a very, very radical uh, change in the conduction of economy. Uh, the evaluation of the threats and their policy option were, in my opinion, a big mistake. At least in economic grounds, there was a lot of uh, political pressure also. But in terms of economics, I don't think that move was uh, justified by fiscal or external accounts. In fact, the, the, the fact is that justified by the confidence that we failed, the macro adjustment uh, was made at the beginning of 2015, built on four pillars fiscal, monetary, exchange rate, and public prices. It was an orthodox shock. Uh, it was common in Brazil, the critic literature of this uh, episode in Brazil, to call this austerity. I, li I don't like too much the name austerity because I guess it's incomplete. It's not just austerity. It's not just fiscal cuts. It was monetary shock, uh, 
increasing tariffs, public tariffs, and a devaluation. It's much more than austerity. It's a disturbing uh, orthodox shock with a real mess in Brazilian economy. Fiscal, what was the contents of this uh, two strategy? Investment cuts and some tax recovery on the short term and the promises of uh, structural spending cuts on the long. This was uh, the most famous phase of the adjustment, but the most ineffective. It was impossible to cut. To and uh, on the monetary side, new round of uh, basic interest rate increases, a strong devaluation of the, our, our currency, and once and for all, correction at the same time with fuel, energy, and other public tariffs. The results, the results of this radical shift in the sign of uh, macroeconomic uh, policy uh, were terrible. Here, the, the, the trends of consumption and investment. Here is the moment. We had uh, deceleration, a moderation of growth of consumption, but here we have a strong decrease after the adjustment. Here is 2015. Here is just the consumption. You see? Yes, here. And here is the unemployment. Records, Brazil was in a historical low rate of unemployment. And after the adjustment, it increases a lot. And here, some indicators of exchange rates there, uh, monetary prices, administrative uh, managed prices. Here, the income, uh, no, interest rates of credit operations, and here is the inflation. The result was a producer's stagflation. No, uh, it's not stagnation, it's recession plus inflation. Here. Produced by the uh, macroeconomic shock. The goal was to regain private sector confidence. And it failed, dramatically failed, and the explanations to this fail are not, or not even mainly economic. The political uh, environment was completely poisoned. <laughs> but the fact is that it was a terrible choice. And then led to political crisis and to the fall of the president. And here's some images of the following illegitimate government. That was Taylor's government, this guy here in the, the, the center of the stage. <laughs> here, here again, and here. With some images of this, uh, uh, his very short term. What was Temer government? Uh, well, fooled by social and political unrest, uh, political environment Brazil, Brazil uh, turned into chaos, uh, thanks to government errors, clear mistakes, opposition and private sector responsibility. I, I'm, I'm sure to say these things now. Uh, and then we experienced a traumatic, and unfair impeachment process in 2016, and uh, a temporary uh, provisional government was constructed uh, to save the country, to rebuild the Brazil that was lost, etc. But it was a tremendous uh, failure, also. It was marked by institutional and political deterioration and deeper corruption scandals. A complete disaster with uh, popularity levels below human true numbers that were almost uh, at uh, the ground level, but uh, Temer reached the final the final month of his term with three percent of popular approval, three or five, nothing. Nobody liked him. He didn't try to to to, <coughs> to run for the election. In economic rounds. Uh, the, the, the record is a complete failure also in short term numbers. Very timid growth resumption, higher and persistent unemployment, and worsening of public finances. In terms of economic rhetoric, the coup, the coup, the, the, coup, the, the that, was justified by public finances. 
that was a mistake, crimes in terms of fiscal policies, and it was necessarily a good economic uh, thing to rebuild the public finances in Brazil. No, everything got much worse in terms of public finances. And good numbers only in inflation in and in external accounts, as I said. But this uh, failure of uh, uh, temporary government in terms of uh, short-term economic numbers was uh, much more exaggerated than it deserves, in my opinion. Why? Because the real economic mission of the, this government was not to recover growth. In fact, short-term results were not the most important. In my opinion, this in red, the mission was taking advantage of the political turmoil, turmoil to alter fast and radically the structural basis of Brazilian economy. This was the mission. It was a radical shift, not in short-term macro management. No, it's very similar to Dilma's truth. It was on the structural options. This was a radical shift to a uh, liberalizing reforms in a lot of aspects of Brazilian economy. Very simultaneous efforts in a liberalizing rates. Some uh, examples, oil sector, public banks, energy enterprises, labor relations. One of the pictures was the, the ceremony to, to, to present uh, shifts in the, in the labor uh, legislations public spending cap, etc. A reform in the pension system was proposed but unsuccessfully uh, because of the political weakness of the, the government. The relation of these liberal efforts with growth was always presented as indirect confidence, private sector replacing state, etc. But it was uh, difficult to, to work, given the structural and short-term problems of the Brazilian economy. From that, as demand and supply sides, it would be very difficult to work this recipe. But in my opinion, this is a very, very personal opinion, they were not so much worried about short-term. The mission was to privatize, to open, to, to, to liberalize uh, legislation of labor relations and pension systems. They got some parts of this, but they failed on the main mission that was pension system reform. Some numbers of Brazilian income since then. This is GDP growth, didn't resume. resume. Here is the government, and these are numbers of uh, this year. This, this two year, this two. Uh, <coughs> the first one is uh, the first uh, quarter of uh, 2000. And 2000. 19. <laughs> and here, an employment rate, strong increase, and a stabi stability on very high levels. This here is a uh, net formal job, job creation. The public debt, gross public debt, pay attention to this huge increase after the adjustment. And here is the uh, primary surplus of. Uh, primary deficit of Brazilian economy. Here, this, this uh, black one is the trend of 2019. It's very similar to, to previous years, in a sharp contrast with the average uh, of the previous uh, five years. And here, a very, very sad uh, result of these last years, the inequality of Brazil, that was the biggest uh, achievement, started to uh, worse again from 2013. Some estimations that uh, the Brazilian income was still uh, was again concentrating to uh, very <laughs> unacceptable levels. Well, on this environment, we arrive at the end of the story. That is Bolsonaro's government. Here is some image of our president with the President Trump. Here, his Minister of uh, Economy and the Ministry of Justice here. 
Here, signing some uh, measures about, uh, I will try to explain in one minute this, this, this uh, measure. And here, uh, talking in Swiss uh, World Economic Forum, trying to sell everything. Well, uh, what about Bolsonaro's economy? That is our <coughs> reality today. Well, first of all, the election of an extreme right leader in Brazil was an expected and very complex process. Uh, there's a lot of explanation to this, but certainly among many other factors, it has clear links with the economic crisis and the political and institutional chaos experienced by Brazil last year. Well, curiously, in economic terms, in yeah. economic issues, the president historically was more guided by old-fashioned ideas, uh, interventionism, uh, national, nationalism. He, he was a, he is a defensor of military dictatorship in Brazil, but it was you, it used to defend the economic policy of the dictatorship that, that was not nothing liberal in Brazil. But this was Bolsonaro's uh, economy economics uh, until two years ago. But during the campaign, to be accepted by private, industry, financial, and other services sectors, he handed the economic program to a very liberal economist, a Chicago boy, not so boy, Chicago PhD guy, uh, with no experience in public sector. Paulo Guedes, that is the commander, the chief of uh, a very strong Ministry of Economy in Brazil. Radical, very radical, <coughs> liberal guy in Brazil. But the economy, as maybe we can try to, to, to talk uh, after the lecture, the economy was not discussed in the Brazilian election. The election in Brazil last year was a craziness, it was a mess, completely uh, completely marked by fake news or moral discussions, so it was a nightmare that started there. So, very few, very, very few discussions about the economy, economic ideas, etc. And once in government, uh, until now, the economic policy of this government was almost inexistent. All efforts were uh, concentrated in a harsh pension system reform proposal that, in a moderated version, is being approved in Congress in Brazil. Uh, political mess, uh, but this is accepted by the private sector, is pushed by even the, the central right people in Brazil, is being approved, but nothing about economic growth about employment, about uh, everything, industry. Besides that, uh, uh, exclusive agenda, uh, ideas, some proposals, very few initiatives were uh, made of an ultra liberal, Pinochet style agenda, much broader than tennis. Uh, the ex-president Temer, the former president Temer, made, uh, gave an interview some weeks ago that he said that Bolsonaro's government is okay because he's continuing my, my, my mission, my task. Okay, it's, in economic terms, it's, it's right, but with a, a lot of plus <laughs> on the side because it's a, a much, much radical, much liberal agenda than Temer. Privatization, in large scale, every single sale, and this is not an exaggeration. Uh, public speech saying everything is on sale. If I can, I will say, um, I will say, I will sell everything. Trade and financial opening in a submissive foreign policy. The first picture is of this, and the destruction of state intervention mechanisms, public banks, year market credit, industrial policy, etc. Well. This is my five last uh, slide. Probably, in my opinion, and this is an effort of a uh, forecast, these reforms won't reduce economic growth, 
but certainly will change dramatically the Brazilian economy. Giving back to our perspective, integrated approach to development, micro, social, and structural, the perspective of uh, the perspectives are very negative. Probably we are experiencing a deeper visual cycles with contractionist micro policy, social exclusion, and structural regression that was already in place since uh, 2015 and is deepening probably on the current days. This is a very bad economic environment for these proposals, for these goals. But certainly, it's full of business opportunities for different private sectors involved. For this is the economic policy of Mr. Bolsonaro. And this, in fact, can boost some short-term bubbles, short-term growth, uh, uh, a new round of uh, currency appreciation, but certainly this is not a path to sustainable economic growth, reduction in unemployment, and much less social inclusion. This is uh, for 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 what forgotten agenda in Brazilian society today. Well, the final message is not so happy, but we are here to discuss this. Thank you very much.